When I tell you that I have never ever played this game and had an easier time getting through it, I am not kidding you. I was killing bosses within seconds of getting into the arena and it is absolutely broken. This is going to be our iron brawler build. We're going to be using the iron balls and just crushing everything in Elden Ring. Let's get into it. So nobody told me, nobody told me at all that the iron balls were the absolute goat of all weapons in Elden Ring. I have made a ton of builds and I thought I was going to be making a meme build, and I was incredibly incorrect. This has to be one of the most fun builds, best builds I've ever made, and I absolutely cannot wait to share this with you guys. I really thought that I was just going to be making some throwaway build, but I beat the Fire Giant in one try, I beat Radagon in one try, I beat the Elden Beast in one try, and that typically never happens for me. Those are multiple try bosses, but the Iron Balls have prevailed. So, we're going to get into every single aspect of this build i'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how the build works and i'm going to show you exactly where to get everything so let's get started now right away in this video i'm going to show you guys my stats right off the bat so you can see exactly where i have my stats allocated to get the most out of this build we are rocking a 150 strength build we're going to have 80 strength 56 vigor 35 endurance and everything else is just kind of left over wherever you want to put it but those are the main stats that we're going to put into this build considering the iron ball only scales with strength this made sense to max out as much strength as we could to get that hard cap so we can get the most damage out of this weapon with our heavy r2s so in order to buff up to get yourself to do all this damage you need to use the commander's standard to get the rallying standard buff and then you're going to drink your flask of wonders physic after that, you're going to use Cragblade on your Iron Ball, and that's going to wrap you up in a ton of damage to start hitting those bosses really hard. So let's take a look at the Iron Ball weapon that we're using for this build real quick. So as you can see, it has a 211 plus 286 physical attack power. It's got a strength scaling of A, which is phenomenal. It's going to require you to have 11 strength and 8 dexterity. And the icing on the cake is that we have put Cragblade on this weapon to get that extra buff, which we're going to talk about in just a second. To get this weapon, you need to kill Big Bogart right in Lyurni of the Lakes at the Prawn Shack, you can either kill him or do his entire quest line, and I believe he will drop them for you at the end, but killing him at the beginning of the game is a surefire way for you to just speed through this game with nothing to stop you. Now, as far as getting the Cragblade Ash of War, this is incredibly easy, and it's going to be located here in Kaelid, right on the map, from a Silver Scarab, and what this buff is going to do is it's going to increase your physical attack power by 15%, your stance damage by 10%, and the stamina against blocking enemies by 50%, so it's just going to help you wreck how along the way in the lands between. Now the two tiers you're going to be using in your Flask of Wonders Physic are going to be the Thorny Crack tier and the Spike Crack tier. I tested a few others out, but these are the ones that I landed on that really made the build feel really nice. The Thorny Crack tier is going to temporarily boost successive attack power, and when all is said and done, can give you about 20% extra attack power to those successive attacks once you've hit about three or four of them in a row. And then the Spike Crack tier can temporarily boost that charge attack power by 15%. This is going to allow your charged up R2s to hit really, really hard and stagger your enemy like crazy. Both these tiers can be attained easily, but in different parts of the game, the Thorny Crack tier is going to be attained from the Consecrated Snowfield Minor Erd Tree Putrid Avatar. Once you kill him, he'll drop that for you. And the Spike Crack tier is going to be given to you from an altar in the Mistwood at the beginning of the game in Limgrave. Now, real quick, I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching this far into the video. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet and you're really enjoying what you're seeing so far, let me know down in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell notification so you guys know when I'm making more videos for you. I really appreciate it. We just hit 11K, so I'm very excited about that. Super excited to see where the channel is going to go in the future. So without further ado, let's get back in the video. Now, for the armor that we're wearing, I wanted this to look somewhat like a boxer. You know, I like to RP the builds in this game. So I went with the Exile Hood, which kind of looks like we have our hoodie up over our head. I have the Hallig Tree Crest Surcoat because it's got a logo on the back, kind of like we're sponsored. I have the Bloodhound Knight Gauntlets and the Scaled Greaves. I think the Bloodhound Knight Gauntlets really flow well into the Iron Balls and the Scaled Greaves. I think they are potentially the best looking piece of leg armor in this entire game. Leave down in the comments below if you agree, but that's just what I think. All of this is going to give you exactly 51 poise, which is exactly what you need not to get staggered around the PvP arena or staggered around by bosses in the lands between. So that's why I went with all of these different pieces and to get them, you are going to have to wander all over the lands between. The Exile Hood can be found in Stormvale Castle. There's a ton of exiles there. Just farm them and they'll drop this for you. The Halig Tree Crest Surcoat is going to be all the way in the Halig Tree in the far north. 
any soldier in the Halig Tree can drop this for you, so go ahead and just farm there. The Bloodhound Knight gauntlets are going to be found in the Glimmer Hero's Grave up near Mount Galmir, and the Scaled Greaves are going to be attained from the second message you receive from Volcano Manor asking you to hunt down the Tarnish. So we've saved the best for last. The last thing we need to cover in this video is the talismans that bring this entire build to life. The first talisman we're going to be using is the Erdtree's Favor Plus 2. I like using this talisman because overall it's a great quality of life talisman. It gives you a bunch of different stats to help you along the way in the lands between, so it's going to raise your maximum HP, stamina, and equip load. It's going to raise your HP by 4%, your stamina by 10%, and your equip load by 8%. So, like I said, overall, fantastic quality of life talisman. If you want to switch this out for the Dragon Crest Great Shield talisman for that minus 20% damage negation, you are more than welcome to do that if you find yourself getting hit more times than not, but overall, I have found this has just done the trick for me. In talisman slot number two, we're going to be using the Axe Talisman, which is going to enhance our charged attacks. This is going to help the Iron Balls hit incredibly hard, and it's going to enhance our charge attacks by 10%, and this is going to stack with our Flask of Wonders Physic, allowing us to get somewhere in the ballpark of 26% attack power boost to our charged attacks, so this Axe Talisman works really well for the build. The Rotwing Sword Insignia is going to be taking our number three slot, and this is just for when you want to switch things up and not use heavy attacks the entire time. You can get that 13% attack power boost after hitting with the Iron Balls about three to four times, and that is incredibly quick, considering this is one of the fastest attacking weapons in the entire game. And for our last Talisman, we have the Green Turtle Talisman. This is going to raise our stamina recovery speed by 17.7%, so that's roughly about 8 per second. So you can use a different talisman in here. I would recommend using a stamina talisman, so either the Viridian Amber Medallion or the Green Turtle Talisman would work perfect in this slot, because I found that using heavy attacks and mixing things up to get the Rotwing Sword Insignia to proc is just going to eat up your stamina, and much like many other quicker attacking weapons like daggers, a stamina talisman is almost necessary when putting a build together. And guys, there you have it. That is the Iron Brawler build. I have had an incredible time playing as this build, and I think you guys are absolutely going to love it as well. Leave down in the comments maybe something you would change or something that you loved from the video. Let me know what you want to see next. I am working on another dagger build. I'm looking at the Urge Steel daggers, trying to figure out exactly the best way to min-max those. So if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, feel free to hit that sub button, hit the bell notification so you can know when my videos are coming out for you. And until next time, stay safe, enjoy the game, and I'll see you in the next one.